We're joined today by Tash Sultana, who has a new album, Terra Firmer. And congratulations on the album. Absolutely spectacular piece of work. Thank you. It's really funny when you release a record and everyone says, congratulations to you. It's like you've had a child. Like everyone's just like, congratulations on your record. Well, it's haven't just you sounded like I'm bringing home a baby. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> some artists feel that way about their work, right? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I do feel that it is my baby that's just been all mine for so many months now, and I'm about to share it with the world for the first time. So instead of it being this, like, thing that I've done that I know every single corner inside and out experience the whole process of putting it all together, it becomes the world's. And no one will ever see it the way that I see it because they weren't there to put it together, but they will receive it. And I always wonder, like, what that would be like to be the listener for the first time on a record that no one's really heard. Yeah, it's it's a great piece of work. And I do want to talk about it more. You know, just to talk about, you know, maybe the work being like bringing home a baby, it reminds me of, family and your family has been so supportive uh I, there's a video out there and i'm assuming that it's you because it's been used in conjunction with you receiving your first guitar when you're three years old i think your grandfather gave you that and then your dad gave you a, a squire when you were eight and your mom got you a distortion pedal when you were nine and they got you guitar lessons for a while and it's not like the family was made of money, but they always found a way to support you. And, you know, you have always talked yeah, about the people. I'm, Go ahead. We, well, I mean, we didn't have money and we always managed to be able to do everything we ever wanted to do some way or another. Like we just made it work and like, that's just life and my parents were very supportive of me always and my sibling always as well my mom I know that her duty on this earth was to be a mother this woman is just seriously so funny she's just the weirdest like people understand me when they meet my parents they're like right you make sense now <laughs> my mom is white Australian my dad is an immigrant who came over from Malta in the la in the late 1970s and when they came over there was eight of them siblings and parents and they lived in a caravan and that's how they came into this country with absolutely nothing but the clothes on their back and they worked from the ground up and my father just always wanted to give us every opportunity that he never had. And for a while, your dad even was your roadie. He did join the tour for a bit, um, but that was a long, a long time ago now. Yeah, yeah. He also, um, he uh, also used to drive me to wherever I had a gig when I was younger. I obviously didn't have my license, so like I didn't get home from school. He'd get home from work, we'd would go and get ready and then drive to whatever open mic night I had scheduled in or whatever gig that I'd picked up or whatever. And that's what we did from when I was 13 years old. You know, all of the talk of family is partly to get around to the gig or to get around to the point that, you know, the people who travel with you now, you want to view them as family as well. Yeah, I mean, in a sense that the people that you tour with become your family because you're actually spending more time with them than you are with your real family and your friends at home. And then you realise that you know each other so well. You know what time people wake up. You know what time people go to bed. You know what food they hate. That one loves spice. That one hates spice. That one hates beetroot. That one fucking likes oranges or whatever or this one's got OCD or this one gets pissed off at that. So then you do it because it pisses them off and it's funny. <laughs> and it's just, you know, we just know each other inside and out. 
you know, it, it's um, pretty well documented. You're busking in Melbourne and, and all of that. Uh, I think that one of the things that I so love about Terra Firma is that, you know, Pretty Lady is a pretty good example of a song that actually started busking, but just hadn't really been finished until now. No. So I've been a, uh, the last 18 months has been the year of the full circle. If that was a Chinese zodiac symbol, it really should be. It was the year of the full circle in my eyes where we've gone on extravagant heights all around the world just to come back to the beginning. And isn't it funny, you know, how life works in that way? Our guest today is Tash Lafana. The new album is Terra Firma. You know, your shows to this point have all been completely solo with looping and, uh, you know, multiple instruments. And, uh, you know, it's a fascinating thing to watch you perform because you do play so many different instruments and, and it feels like you're driven to learn all of these. You are self-taught on all of them. But I was really kind of curious what your process was when you go to learn a new instrument. Do you just pick it up and screw around with it? Do you go to, you know, YouTube and find videos? Do you yeah. look at books? How do you do it? Yeah. Well, I have a whole bunch of things. So, like, YouTube is a really good source to go to. Another one is Instagram. Um I read a lot of tab and another thing that I do is I've got a lot of apps that I use to just like learn new scales, toying around different keys, different time signatures and all of that. There's a really good app that I use called um, Tonally and it's a really good way to help you convert from one instrument to the other. So I use that if I need to, but yeah, majority of the time play by ear and I like to see really good players on Instagram who play really good bass or really good horns or really good guitar or really good this and really good that and just kind of like get inspired and try to be just as good. You know, I saw your show in Kansas City and it was really an interesting experience for me trying to figure out how to watch your show because you're running around and you're playing all these instruments and that's a show in and of itself, right? And then you've got all the screens with all the videos and that's all really cool. But I have to say that for a lot of the show, I really thought that the best way to enjoy it was just to close my eyes and not watch you run well, that's around. That's really lovely. Yeah. You know, when you when you kill off one sense, all the other ones become heightened. So you've got your eyes closed and I bet you that your ears were full of screaming chicks and your nose was full of marijuana. <laughs> 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 well, I, you know, I, I really thought afterwards, after the show, when I realized, you know, that, you know, as a listener, I'd done my best to enter the flow state, right? Uh, so I felt well, like it was maybe the purest way to to watch the show. Um, but so you've been out and you've been doing this solo thing and it's you know, it starts out with you busking and then you're in a van and then you're in buses and all of a sudden there's like 10 or 12 people. And then, but the shows, it all comes down to you. And I know that you love that, but there's also got to be some weight that goes with it always coming down on mm. Is that a fair thing? To say? I, yeah, yeah, it is. I, uh, I'm really bummed if I feel like I didn't play a good show. It'll take me a couple of days to get over it. And it also takes uh, a couple of gigs to kind of like heal the wound because I feel like if I'm not the best that I possibly can be playing the best I can as, as alert as I should be or singing the best that I fail the audience. And that audience spans quite far and large, generally, you know, playing in front of thousands of people when there is nowhere to hide on that stage alone. Like I can't just hide behind someone or something because it's all live. It's all happening as you, as you are watching it. The show happens as you are watching it. So, you know, and 
you'll have to tell me if I'm getting this right or getting it wrong, but just that pressure of it always being you and also wanting the music to be more, to not have any restrictions placed on the music based on whether or not what you write could be done with looping. You know, you have sort of talked about getting moving forward with like a new three piece band that would be on stage with you at some points. And you also sort of opened yourself up to collaboration with Tara Funk. Yes, I did. But I am currently a solo performer. I have some big plans. I cannot disclose them because I don't even know what the fuck they are going to fully be yet. Because every time I get an inch, something happens with COVID and that runs for a mile. But uh, we'll be fluid. It's okay. I accept it. Um, I got some big plans for the new show. It's going to be in a new light. Uh, if you thought that I was a firecracker before, I will probably literally explode into a million pieces when I <laughs> do do that again. But, yeah, the collaborations was cool. I, uh, I got a couple more up my sleeve that I'll probably release later on in the year just because why the fuck not? Yeah. Why the fuck not? I, it, it, there's a thing where you just seem so driven to get better and do the next thing and do it right and just continue to grow. And, and I just wondered if collaboration was kind of like learning another instrument. Pretty much. It's like you get this fusion of artistry together where you would not achieve those things on your own because your mind does not work in that way and you do not perceive the situations or the music or the sonics or anything in the same light. So somebody's going to look at something totally different as to you and putting the brains together and Lux's fortitude of fucking crazy shit that when it works, it's great. But I haven't been in a situation where it hasn't worked. So I can imagine that that would be also pretty hectic too. So you, uh, on Terra Firma, Terra Firma, you partnered with Matt Corby, an artist, and Dan Hume, a producer, and you had a 10-day co-writing session and another place where you're sort of maybe getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. Well, I mean, to be honest, the aim was just that. It was just a writing session for 10 days, just like, let's all get together and see what we do. And uh, I had a couple of songs up my sleeve. Um, that I didn't think were good enough and I presented them to the audience as in Matt and Dan and then they were just like well you're a fucking idiot because these are absolutely worthy of being used so it was that confidence push that I needed and then everything all just gelled together and married up and at the end of that 10-day writing session there was four, well, there was the beginning of four songs. And then after that, I was left to bake the bread for a bit. And I did change quite a lot. Like I did some bass lines again, or I changed the key in a few. I changed the chorus. I, I did some of the drums again, but I would never have achieved any of that without that 10 day writing sesh, which was great. We had a good time, Matt and I, we came over. We went surfing, then we went back into the studio the next day, and it was just a nice time. Our guest today is Tash Sultan, and the new album is Terra Firma. And I get the impression that COVID was like the best thing and the worst thing that ever happened to you. Because in a way, it gave you some time to reclaim yourself, become your real self away from your public persona. It also gave you time mm -hmm. to work on Terra Firma. Uh, and really polish it up the way you wanted it. I actually feel like you should be me and I should be you and I should be interviewing you because you've got this so locked down and accurate. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Well, the thing about How it How about you just it, answer it, the questions for here, the rest of it? Here's the thing. I've never told another artist this, right? But like, if you get the artist, if you could kind of tell a little bit of the story for the artist, then the audience already has the facts and the artist has to tell you how they feel. Well, honestly, this is a great system. And I'm very impressed, <laughs> very impressed. <laughs> 
So you we've got it. Sorry, but we will be sending you. The, we have to send you the record now. We have to. It, we have got to. Happy anniversary from me. I will get off this call <laughs> and I will get that sorted for you. Well, my send wife. Send your address to David Jacobs, and we will get one dispatched. There you go. You know. Um, so how? So did you did you give yourself some time to reset before you start working on Terra Firma? Uh, I know you love gardening. I know you love uh, surfing. That's your reset yeah. button. Yeah, well, at the moment, well, you know what? Not even at the moment. In that time, it was very necessary because I've said this in a few different interviews. Um, when I came back from being on tour for all of those years, which was 2014 until 2020, I was a fucking carcass, a soulless carcass that was uh, really needing to just stop. Like to the point when I was on tour at the end of 2019, I was so burnt out and like so exhausted that I had really bad acne. I lost a lot of weight. I was like 48 or 49 kilos. I don't know what that is in pounds, but very, very thin. Um, and I was getting vitamin IV infusions once a week just to keep my body going. So I was getting like one liter bags of vitamin C, vitamin B, magnesium, zinc, glutathione, like once a week just to like keep my fucking body going and then when I got home there was just this like really hectic static energy and I didn't know what it was but I knew that it was something big and I had to like loosen my grip my hold that I had on like needing to control situations around me and, and things I needed to let that go and then all of a sudden we go to the Maldives for a little holiday I'm looking online People were fucking punching each other in the face over cans of tuna and toilet paper. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this going on? And then we get home and all the international borders close and then all of the domestic borders close and then everything starts shutting down and people are confined to their house and the phone starts ringing and manager's like, all right, you're not going to Singapore, you're not going to Japan, you're not going to Bali, you're not going to South America. You're not going to the US, you're not going to Canada, you're not going to the UK, you're not going anywhere, you're not going anywhere, you're literally not going anywhere. And I was just like, right, fuck. Um, and then because there was no distraction and there was no fast paced lifestyle, where do you get that validation from if you've been living in distraction for so long? And it starts within and it takes a really long time. And it can be really ugly, but usually it turns into something really beautiful at the end. Well, and my understanding is that you're at least going to start touring in Australia in August. Um, at least that's the current plan. You know, we'd love to see you stay as soon as we can. Who, who fucking knows? That's all I can say. Who fucking knows? <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, I, I did want to ask you too. It seems like, it feels like, from what I can piece together, that at least a good healthy chunk of terra firma was recorded in your home studio. Is that correct? Uh, not my home studio. I don't have a studio at my house. I um, have a studio, an actual proper studio that I bought a few years ago in Melbourne because I need to have that uh, home and work separation. The entire record was recorded in my studio. Yeah, that that was what I was trying to figure out, uh, whether that was at home or separate. So good to know. Well, congratulations on separate. that. Separate. I've got a, I've got a jam room at home so that I don't always have to tra travel back and forward. Which I actually got going during COVID because you couldn't travel so there were points in time where I actually wasn't even allowed to use my studio so just having things set up at home for the purpose of rehearsing and keeping up that player fitness I, I did that so I have 
a few copies of the rig that I tour with, like one in the studio and then that travels all around the world and then I've got the exact same one at home so that, like, it's the same. I can always jam. You know, I, I have to say I have zero question around this, but I think the, the thing that I love the most getting ready, researching for this interview was uh, you saying that you needed to find a place to live as sort of a way. And so you described it as living at the intersection of tumbleweeds and kangaroos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how about this? We, uh, this is the most disgusting thing, right? We live in the bush, which is beautiful, not disgusting. But I am in the, my jam room jamming the other, the other night. And then I walk, I just thought, I'll have a little break for a minute. I walk into my bedroom to see my little three and a half month old whippet puppy sitting on my side of the bed, chewing on a fucking dead rabbit's eyeball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this little shit has had brought this fucking rabbit in, this dead rabbit from the bush, inside, through the doggy door, through the kitchen, through the lounge room, up the stairs, up the next set of stairs, into the bedroom and onto the fucking bed. The things you miss when you're on tour. <laughs> yeah. And um, I this happened a couple of days ago, actually. And I still, I love her, but I can't look at her the same right now. <laughs> like, uh, I have a really, really, really weak stomach. And I just was in the hallway, just gagging, like, just, and yelling. Like, I was literally just like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and, yeah, it was disgusting. So, I, you know, just to get back, I listened to Terra Firma. It is so great. Uh, and you're, uh, I wanted to get you to speak a little bit about, you know, how your listening habits and your love of other music might have influenced it. I know you listened to a lot of R&B going into this one. Yes. I also listen to a lot of 1970s funk because I really like that approach to drum engineering tracking. So I listened to a lot of like Isaac Hayes and Marvin Gaye, Aretha Franklin, um, brothers. the Brothers Johnson. Yeah, the Jones Girls, um, just because I really like the the bass and the drums in that type of in that style of music because that's like a lot of the time you'll hear like people love to high pass filter the shit out of their mixes so that there's not heaps of bottom end going on but you find in those recordings that like that you can fucking hear those drums and you can hear that bass and that's exactly what I like to do if I could have it my way you your head would blow off your shoulders because that is how much I love the bottom end you know um you like it's amazing that I am not just a neck like <laughs> I love the sub <laughs> you know uh you have so much to be proud of with the new album Terra Perma but you also uh, are the first Australian to ever get a signature guitar from Fender yeah apparently so I, I don't know if that's 100% correct because I've heard a few different things. I've heard the third Australian, but I've also heard the first Australian. But on top of that, I, I don't know who or if the other two, I don't know who the other two people are or if that is a thing. But if I am the first, I'll, I'll take it. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because it's a cool guitar and you love Stratocaster. So this is kind of your thing. I do. Yes, I do. It's amazing. You know what? I walked into a little while ago my um, childhood music store, which I still frequent to this day. And I walked in there and they let me know that they were going to be stocking my guitar in that, st in that store, which is, again, back to the full circle moment. Here's a store that I've been going into since I was seven years old. 
looking at all the equipment on the wall and thinking, God, it would be really cool to have a guitar. God, it would be really cool to have this purple guitar lead. God, it would be really cool to have this pick or this pedal, this and that, all the things that you dream of when you're a kid. And uh, then we fast forward almost 20 years on into the future and they're going to be putting my guitar in that store and not just that store but all around the world, which is fucking ridiculous. Big moment. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, again, I don't want to take up all of your time. Uh, I know you're really busy and I, I really appreciate the time you spent with us tonight. But again, congratulations on Terra Farmer. It's a fabulous album. It's out on Mom and Pop, Tash Sultana. Thanks so much for joining us today on The Bridge. Thank you. I should be calling you Tash Sultana and me, John Hart. You are listening to John Hart. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Thanks, Tash. That was, that See was you later. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.